Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering Python interview questions that is recently asked in a GenPack interview. Talking about the first question, given as a list, we have A2, B3, C10. We need to get the string character repeated based on the number here. So A2, so we should get A2 times in the output. Similarly, B3, so we should get B3 times in the output. And we have here C10. So we should get C 10 times in the output. So that is the first question. Now talking about second question, we have given as a two list. In a one list, we have one, two, three, four. In list two, we have one and three. So if you look at the expected output, we need to find all the elements in list one that are not present in a list two. So in the list one, two and four are present, but in list two, two and four are not present. Only one and three is present. So we're supposed to get that in the output. So let's see how to write a Python program for this. We have first question here with a list A2, B3, C10. These are the list of elements we're having. We'll be solving this by using a for loop. So for each element in the list, we'll separate the character and the number first. And then we'll repeat the character by multiplying the character with the number. And then we'll finally display the output. I will be taking an empty list. And to this empty list, I will collect my output. So to start with the for loop, yes. so we'll loop a one by one item. So first A2 will come, next B3 will come, next C10 will come. So one by one item will come inside. So inside that, I will take character separately and I will take integer values separately. So for character, I will take I of zero. So I'll be taking an index position as zero. So the zero th index position we have a, b, c. Okay. So first a two will come inside. So a two will come here. In the a two it will take a. a. Similarly b three will come inside. In the b three it will take p. Similarly c ten will come inside. Uh, in the loop it will take c. So like that all the characters will come and store here in the variable character. Similarly, I will take a numbers as well. So by using a variable number, I will take all the letters. So starting from index position one till the ending. Okay. So in, in some scenarios like C10, so we have more than one value. So starting from the index position one, all the values starting from index position one, all the values we're supposed to take. So in this way, we are separating a characters and numbers. Then finally, we can do multiplication on characters and numbers. Okay. So I will be taking the output and I will be appending the output to that. Okay. Character into number. Okay. So number is coming anyway as a string. So we need to convert into an integer. So I will be taking an int of number. So in this way, in the first iteration, a2 will come inside. So character will hold a value a and number will hold a value as a two. So a into two times. So we'll get a two a's. Similarly, b3 in the next iteration, b3 will come. So character will hold b and three will hold by a numerical. So number, you can say it is number. So it will be b into three. So three times b will come. Similarly, c10. So character will, will hold c and 10 uh, number will hold 10. So it will be C into 10, 10 times. Uh, C will come 10 times. So in this way, we can achieve it. So if we print this, we'll get the expected output. Okay. If I run this one, I can see A is coming two times, B is coming three times, C is coming 10 times. So in this way, simply by using a for loop, we can separate a characters and numbers. We can get the expected output. Next question, we are having a two list, list one and list two. We need to find out the elements which are available in list one, but not available in list two. So this also we can simply achieve by using a for loop. Here also I will be taking an empty list. To that empty list, I will store a output. We we'll start writing a for loop. So I'll be taking a list one items. So we will loop all items. So one will come inside first then two will come, then three will come, then four will come. So once all the items one by one coming inside this for loop, we have to check these items is 
available in a list to or not. So that is the reason. So we'll be writing a if condition. So if item, so whatever item is coming inside, if this item is not in a list to, then only we'll capture it. Okay. So we'll capture this output and we'll append to the output list. Okay, so now what will happen? One will come inside first. It will check if one is available in a list two or not. So one is already available. So this condition will become false. It will be skipped because we are not using anything in the else condition. And next, two will come inside and will check if two is not available in a list two or not. So two is not available in list two. This condition become true. So two will be happen to the output list. Similarly, three will come. It will check if three is available in a list two or not. So three is already available. So this condition become false. It will skip it. And next four will come inside inside this loop, and it will check if four is available in list two or not. So four is not available. So it will append that value to the uh, output list. So finally we are left with the two and four. So that is the expected output. So in this way we can check each and every element with the list two. The element is available or not. So if it is not available, then only we'll append it. We'll store in the output list. So finally, we can print it out to get the expected output. If we go ahead and execute it, now we can see we are getting only two and four. So two and four are the only uh, elements which is not available in the list two. So in this way, simply by using a for loop, we can achieve it. That's all for this video. In case if you have any other alternate approach, please post in the comment box.